Now the next thing we're going to simulate is a uh, computer lab printing. And the reason they say you might do this is uh, it's expensive to uh, to invest in uh, buying a lot of stuff and try it out and you find out you didn't buy enough for, uh, uh, to actually solve your problem or you didn't set it up the right way to solve your problem. So it may be less expensive to simulate some kind of system prior to investing in building it. This is true of a lot of cases. Uh, anytime you, uh, someone builds an airplane or a car design, they will simulate it uh, and they'll simulate a lot of the different systems in these two things before they actually build it. So they can actually answer a lot of questions about its performance, even the cost of doing it, when will it break down, how will it behaves in a crash. There's a lot of things they can simulate now. When they build a bridge, uh, they, will real, they will use a mathematical model and put it on a computer that simulates the loads on the bridge uh, for all the parts of the bridge so they can make sure the bridge will support a load or survive in an earthquake. Uh, anytime you build a spacecraft or a rocket, uh, it's going to go places you can't even fix it necessarily. So they always simulate a lot of aspects of spacecraft and rockets before they actually build it. Uh, even when you're building a network, uh, there's a whole group that's working on the next network design. So how will we build, how will we change the internet, for example, to behave better? Or how are we going to change how wireless systems like cell phones work better with each other? So rather than actually building a network and spending all that money, there's actually software that will simulate a network and you can change aspects of how it works and then simulate it and find out its characteristics. So you can save a lot of money by doing that. Uh, one of the most common simulations you might use is a simulator where you interact with a simulator. So you have a real, quote, real world simulation in some way and you interact with it. And the most common uh, experience you may have had for this is uh, when you play games. When you play a lot of uh, shooter games or action games on a computer, you're actually involved in a simulation. So the example in the book shows how to simulate a bunch of computers printing in a lab environment where we have several printers and we want to ask the question, well, how, what's the maximum and average wait times for getting a printout uh, prior to buying the printers? So we have a lab that has a certain number of students and we know they, they print on a certain uh, statistical way they have they, they print behavior. So we want to see uh, what's the maximum wait time, for example. Now this type of simulation is actually going to simulate time. So the idea there is you have a main loop that simulates one second each time it goes through the loop. And that's how you simulate time. Now of course the computer can simulate much faster than in real time. So the loop may go through a billion iterations in a second. Uh, so you can simulate a billion seconds in one second. And that's one of the advantages. Also a simulation is if, it, if it's a simple simulation, uh, you can simulate before things happen. In fact, this is how the weatherman does things. There's uh, some very, very expensive computers and they have a model of the weather and they input what is the current weather and it simulates what it's gonna, going to happen. And uh, they have it now where they can simulate up to 10 days in advance and report it on the weather. Of course, a lot of the nature of simulating very complex systems in the world is it's only an approximation. So they're actually approximating the weather. And that's why the more time they get out, the less uh, accurate the prediction is. It's also why even for predicting rain, they give you chances of rain because they can't simulate all the chaos that's actually exists in the real system. And they also can't uh, actually simulate it in the amount of precision of the real world. Now also when you study the code uh, for simulating the lab, you're going to see some more uses of object-oriented programming. So they have a printer class that represents each printer in the simulation. So they define methods that will interact with the other classes. They've added a task class which represents when a, when a student wants to print something and adds it to the, the task of printing something, uh, it'll, it'll represent that task. So the task might be printing a certain number of pages or a print job that takes a certain amount of time. And then uh, they just add two more functions to help 
I'll run the simulation, one that has the main loop, uh, and so we can look at that. So let's look at the code for this. Oh, let's, there's a little diagram first. Uh, well, there's this description, so how they're going to do it. So they're going to use a queue uh, for uh, the print task. So they're going to create a queue of the print task. Each task will be given a timestamp upon its arrival. So in the simulation, the timestamp will tell when it was first put in the queue. Uh, the queue is empty to start. Now for each second of the simulation, uh, they say, do, does, does a new print task get created? If so, add it to the queue with the current second as the timestamp. If the printer is not busy, and if a task is waiting, so this is all in this loop for the, each second, so if a printer is not busy and there's a task waiting, they're going to have to print it. So they remove the task from the queue, assign it to a printer, subtract the timestamp from the current second uh, to compute the waiting time for that task. Then they append the waiting time for that task to the list uh, for later processing. Uh, then based on the number of pages in the, the print task that's been simulated, they're going to figure out how much time it will be required to print. Okay, and then that these are all things happening that second. So in the next second, in the still in the second, they, if the printer now does uh, one second of printing, so they're going to ask the printer to, to actually do a second of printing, and it subtracts one second from the time required for the printing task it's working on. Uh, if the task has been completed by the printer, uh, the printer is no longer busy, so the printer is going to change its state. So after the simulation is complete, uh, we compute the average waiting time from the list of waiting times generated. So let's look at that. So here's the lab sim. So first they have a printer class. So when you make a new printer, you give it how many pages per minute it can print uh, as a parameter. It has a instance variable which keeps track of its state, which is, is it currently doing a new task? What is the task? So this will be pointing to the task when it's busy. And this will be the time remaining for print that task. So this will be a countdown from however long it's going to take. It'll be counting down every second. So tick gets called to simulate time. So in the main loop, it's going to ask the printer to simulate one second. So it's going to call this method. It's going to say uh, if I'm if I'm if the current task is not equal to none, meaning I'm printing something. It's going to set the time remaining to time remaining minus one, so it's going to subtract one second from the time it takes to do that printing for that current task. Uh, if it uh, reaches zero, it's going to set current task to zero or to none, meaning it's done. And if uh, this busy is just a uh, return a boolean, so if there is a current task and it's not none, it's going to say yes, I am printing. And you'll notice that when it was done printing, it set current task to none. So if if the current task is none, it's going to return false. So that simulates the printer. It's an object that will give you that uh, information. Oh, and then there's one to start a task. So you give it a new task. It sets the new task in the current task. And then it calculates based on the number of pages for that task and how fast this printer prints. It's going to set the time remaining to do the printing. And then there's task. So task is actually uh, the object that represents a task. So when it starts, it, you give it a time, which is the current time stamp. Uh, and then it creates the number of pages from a random range from 1 to 21 pages. So that's part of the simulation that you could change that number if you expect uh, print jobs to be larger than that. Maybe students average bigger than that. So you would actually change how this works. Uh, get stamp returns the timestamp. Uh, get pages returns the pages. So those are just accessor f methods that return the instance variables. Uh, wait time. Uh, you pass it the current time, and it takes the current time minus the timestamp to figure out the wait time. And now here's the functions that run everything. So there's a simulation function, and then down at the bottom here we have a loop for range 1 to 10, 
run the simulation. So it's going to, this is how many total simulations it's going to do. So it's actually going to do more than one simulation. It's going to do 10 of them. And each simulation is going to run for this long. And I think that represents the number of printers. Let's go back up here. Oh, that's pages per minute. So each printer is going to be simulating these many pages per minute. And this is how long the simulation will run. So it starts by creating a, 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 a queue. Well, actually, it creates a printer called the lab printer. Uh, it creates a queue called the print queue. And it creates an array of waiting times, which is the how, how, many t uh, the, how much time each task took. Then this is the big loop for the simulation, for the current second in the range of how long it's going to run the simulation. If new print task, uh, then it's going to create a new task and enqueue it in the print queue. So let's see, where is new print task? So I'm going to find it here. Here's new print task. So new print task sets a number from 1 to 181. If the number is equal to 180, it returns true. So this is testing when I should create a print task. So out of uh, 180 seconds, it's going to create a task uh, once every 180 seconds. That's how that works. So I'm in a particular second. I have a 1 in 180 chance it's going to actually create a print task. Uh, so that's how that works. So if you have students doing starting a print task more often than that, uh, you can adjust the numbers here. So if they printed it, if they created a task, we have a new task in the queue. Uh, next, it checks if uh, if there is a if the lab printer is busy, not busy, and the print queue is not empty, then they're going to assign it to that printer. So they're going to dequeue the print task and store it in next task. They're going to append the waiting times, uh, the current second. So they get next task, the wait time for that task and they pin that to waiting times and then they start that printer so that's going to start the task on that printer and then next they're going to tick the lab printer through one second so it's going to do all its work and finally they get the uh, the average weight equal to the sum of the wait time so this is when the simulation's all done they get the average weight as the sum of all the wait times uh, divided by the length of how many wait times there were and then they print out a statement. So a lot there. So when we run it, we'll see uh, five simulations. You'll see at the bottom here, it's printed out the, the average wait time. And in a couple of cases, there was a task waiting when it finished simulation. It hadn't finished printing a task. So it also tells you that. So of course, you can look at that. And you can see here's the maximum would be it had to wait 300 seconds. Uh, so depending on if that's too long for a student to wait, you could add, you could try modifying the simulation to do two printers. So it, if the first printer is busy up here, it would uh, check another printer and see if it could add it to the, its uh, printing. Um, so that's, uh, you can also play with how busy the students, do they only average 180 seconds for every time they issue a job and how many pages they print. So you can also mess with that. So this has a lot of qualities that you see in any, si in any simulation. This